America's Heartland is made possible by Farm Credit, financing agriculture and rural America since 1916. Farm Credit is cooperatively owned by America's farmers and ranchers. Learn more at farmcredit.com. Crop Life America, representing the companies whose modern farming innovations help America's farmers provide nutritious food for communities around the globe. Hi, I'm Sarah Gardner. We'll connect you with some folks in America's heartland this time. We're taking you cross country to see how technology and new directions in communication are connecting city folks with farmers and ranchers in America's rural communities. First up, a computer connection to a Nebraska rural community that's gone online to promote their area and let others know about opportunities in the heartland. We'll take you to North Carolina where small farmers are finding that broadband connections can make a real difference in keeping their farms profitable. We'll travel to Kansas to meet two women who traded urban lifestyles for new homes in the country. They've gone online to share that experience. And new apps on that smartphone are helping farmers in third world nations to grow more and stay healthy. It's all coming up on America's Heartland. You can see it in the eyes of every woman and man in America's Heartland, living close to the land. There's a love for the country and a pride in the brand in America's Heartland, living close close to the land. There's no denying technology has changed all of our lives, whether we live in the city or deep in America's heartland. It's provided consumers with more information about the food that makes its way to their tables, and it's helped farmers and ranchers become much more productive. Global positioning technology was a giant leap forward for farmers. It made it possible to plant, spray, and harvest crops with precision. That meant farmers could save on energy costs, reduce the amount of pesticides they were using, and spend less time in the field. Computers allowed access to crop information, and cell phones meant producers could tap into market prices anytime they wanted. Today, there's a wealth of smartphone applications to deliver critical agricultural information used by farmers and ranchers as they handle their daily production. We'll outline one very important smartphone app a little bit later on in the show, but let's start in Nebraska, where Akiba Howard found two women with an ambitious online effort to promote rural living. Nancy Herhan and her sister Betty Ann Sayers say the pleasure of living in rural Nebraska is one of the country's best kept secrets. What a good thing you've got going here, you know, without the traffic, uh, without the noise. People look out for you and they greet you and they um, tell you their stories and want to hear yours. The sisters were born in this corner of southeast Nebraska, but then life and career took Betty to Minnesota and Nancy to Chicago, then San Diego. As the years passed, both realized their urban experiences weren't all positive. You don't realize how much energy it takes to live in a city. You are, you're practically on adrenaline, just getting you know, from place to place, and uh, whether it's grocery shopping or your job. Hello, Tom, hello, Linda. That's when the pair got a grip on the situation. First, moving back to Nebraska, then extolling the virtues of a rural lifestyle online. And when we came back, instead of seeing drought and dirt and people leaving and businesses failing, and we saw prosperity and lots and lots of fresh, clean water and clean air and uh, wildlife and interesting people doing unusual things. Their discoveries and their adventures can be found at NebraskaRuralLiving.com, a website chock full of positive stories about rural life in the Cornhusker State. I think our goal is to, to let people know what the communities really are like, what the people are like. And of course we have housing uh, listings on the website so they get an idea of the, of the cost of living. And we link to a uh, job uh, career link so they can get a overview of what kind of jobs are available. So, yeah, I think we're showing that there's life out here. How would you describe your operation? 
On this day, Betty Ann and Nancy are developing a story about farmers Tom and Linda Schwartz. Like this field we're standing in right now, uh, it's, it's somewhat of an experiment. It's all cover crop. And there are stories uh, of people who, who've managed to become prosperous and you know, make their living in the same place they make their life. We may chase it with another cover crop. And then Tom put it and Linda say they're more than happy to promote crop. farming and the Nebraska lifestyle. I wouldn't want to raise my family anyplace else. I mean, it's just, we feel safe. We have wonderful work ethics out here. And to, to be showing this to the other people in the country, I mean, let's face it, a lot of people in the country think we're hicks out here. And we have wonderful people out here and a wonderful lifestyle. Linda says that lifestyle includes a tight-knit community sharing both the good times as well as the bad. If you have a tragedy, the people are there for you, and that's really nice. I like the Swartz story because it's going to be complex in that there are four or five different businesses within one agricultural umbrella. And I like the way they have taken a leadership um, position in, in uh, the marketing of and in the state, the, of, in Nebraska. The state of Nebraska. Yeah. Back at their home base, the ladies discuss how their new story should be written and okay. what other features should be added. Oh, do we have any new essays oh, coming yes, in? Oh, yes, that's true. We have, well, I don't know, you never know. We have essays that come from, from far-flung places. We let people write essays for us, and if it's appropriate, we will put them on our website. Unlike many websites, it's not advertising that keeps the ladies going. This online connection to rural America draws support from grants and the area's featured communities. We haven't turned to advertising yet. And we like the way our site looks. We like the, it's clean. It's also a labor of love, both about telling a good story and sharing the story of rural life in the heartland. We'll often get uh, comments, uh, you know, thank you for what you're doing. And uh, oftentimes, how can we do it where we are? Uh, we need this too. To promote the lifestyle, the quality of living and the op opportunities to live well in rural places. They take their farming seriously in the Cornhusker State. More than 90% of the state's land is devoted to agriculture. Nebraska is a prime producer when it comes to diverse agricultural products. Beef production is high on the list, but so too are great northern beans, pinto beans, and popcorn. We've mentioned in the past that being a successful farmer or rancher can be dependent upon a number of factors. Weather is an obvious one, but think about energy costs, equipment issues, farm labor, right down to the cost of seeds or water. And finding a market for your crops is equally important. That's why technology can be helpful in letting consumers find you or helping you find markets. Case in point, a community in North Carolina where broadband is making a difference. It's a technological confluence of crops, cameras, and computers. Lindy Abrams grows vegetables and herbs along Mountain Creek in North Carolina. Photos of her crops will be uploaded to a website, helping to sell her produce online. There are about 12 regular restaurants and individuals who buy through the website right now from me. Lindy is one of a growing number of farmers in this Appalachian region marketing their crops online thanks to the Farmers Fresh Market website. The website is one of the rural development projects created by Tim Will and a nonprofit business and technology center called Foothills Connect. What did you get? Oh, let's see, more of those uh, strawberries, the sticky rice. Oh yeah. The idea of connecting crops and consumers by computer came to Tim while visiting his cousin, a chef in Charlotte, North Carolina. I told him that I was working as a rural economic developer in a place where I couldn't believe it, had a lot of vacant land and not many people farming. And he said, no, the unbelievable thing is the fact that we here in Charlotte can't get fresh food. The Farmers Fresh Market website meant producers could reduce costs for sales and marketing. And restaurants saved money since buying local reduced their transportation costs. The 70 miles from Rutherford County to Charlotte uh, North Carolina was, was, was insignificant if you use the internet to display and sell, transact your produce. 
But developing a new idea didn't mean everyone was ready to buy in, including farmers who might benefit the most. They just thought I was nuts, the idea of selling food over the internet. And um, in many cases then we had to train the farmer how to use a computer and then use the internet. The real issue was then getting the inventory because we had to re-educate the farmers how to grow in raised beds sustainably with non-commodity crops. Learning the mechanics necessary to use the website was one more step in the education process. Well, the first thing I do is get a good picture and I take pictures of exactly what I'm selling so that there's transparency that this is exactly where it's grown and what it looks like in the field. And then I count up how much I think I'll have available that week and I go online and I post it. Direct deliveries and pickup locations are used to get crops to consumers. Uh, how many you got down there? Oh, about 10, ten more? Huh? It's great to bring them on up. That's been a boon to farmer Buddy Evans, who can focus on his crops instead of sales calls. It's very easy. Uh, there's not a whole lot of sales involved. Uh, the day of the internet is just unbelievable. You I mean, get your strawberries for the salad. Now, you Those time them? management benefits are also important for chefs who connect with growers online. It's very easy to use. Like I love to go out to local farmers markets, but that will take me out of my business two to three hours depending on how far away, whereas the Farmers Fresh project brings all of that, the farmers market, right to me via my computer. The product is harvested that day when it's ordered or the next morning before it's delivered and brought right to me, right out of the fields. The internet project also revealed an added benefit in crop management for the small scale producers. Field production could be adjusted as specific orders came in. I don't have to harvest anything that I don't plan on selling. With farmers markets, it's kind of a gamble. Uh -huh. And when you go to Foothills Connect, you're, you get your order and you harvest only what you know you have sold. So you can leave crops in the ground a little bit longer and wait and harvest them fresh for another market. Yeah, which obviously is very helpful for you in terms of making your bottom line. Making my bottom line and providing the freshest produce possible too. For restaurant buyers on the other end, that harvest option provided cost savings when looking to create new recipes and revamp menus. So many of these items are specialty items. They demand a higher price for the producers, but you can order them in small quantities and feature them as a special or as part of a dish. Thank you. Today, these rural counties are seeing greater utilization of farmland that once lay fallow providing sustainable alternatives for growers and consumers. I never expected to be in this position this quick. It seems like it's all falling into place for us. We've been uh, in a 200 to 250 uh, percent increase each year and we expect that to continue. One other benefit, the Farmers Fresh website has spawned face-to-face -face connections as well as those online. Some of the farmers are actually my customers. I get to know them, they come in here, they enjoy my food, they see their products on the menus. So it's just a wonderful relationship. Let's talk sweet stuff from North Carolina. Pepsi-Cola was invented by pharmacist Caleb Bradham in New Bern, North Carolina, way back in 1898. Jump forward to 1937, and a gentleman named Vernon Rudolph came up with the idea for Krispy Kreme Donuts at his bakery in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. When you talk about connections to the heartland, you may already know that there's a wealth of information about agriculture at our America's Heartland website. But we're just one of hundreds of sites addressing agriculture in America. Some are strictly informational, but others are more personal connections. Let's take you to Kansas to meet two young women with urban backgrounds who've been sharing the story of their lives in rural America. Yes. Well, I hear I'm getting ready and I hear that. For couples Kim and Adam Baldwin, who met online, and Katie and Derek Sawyer, who met through a friend, it was matches made in heaven with marriages in the heartland. Two couples where each bride-to-be was trading her previously urban life for a future on the farm. For Katie, those plans involve some advice from mom. She gave me fair warning that if you move to the farm and you become a farm wife, life is completely different. The farm dictates your life. You don't dictate the farm. And what about Kim? You gotta know, know how this stuff works. The first year was definitely a learning experience. I'm not gonna lie, it still is. See if you can find the switch. I was exposed to agriculture, but 
nothing like what I'm experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis out here. Lefty, loosey, righty, tidy, right? Yeah, you got I'm it. just concerned that I might break something. I think I just broke a nail. I just broke it in the drill when I was looking for that tab doohickey. I often tell people it's like I went back to school to learn a new profession. Okay, now you're in the trees. They weren't giving me any kind of breather time. I had to learn on the job. <laughs> She has learned a lot and it's, it's really exciting to see how enthusiastic she has always been about it. She's come a long ways. Starting any marriage demands a period of adjustment, adjusting your style to that of your partner. Well, I'm the list maker, the to-do person, and I have to have accomplish certain things by certain points. And um, after meeting Adam and marrying Adam, I've realized to just chill out a little bit. I still have my moments. Well, I think part of it is being a farmer, you make a list and it rains and then it's screwed up. And so you, you can have big, you just need to know what needs to get done next and you just kind of keep going down your list. But learning new skills is a two-way street. He knows how to run a sleeper now. He is learning to load dishes in the dishwasher. We're still working on that one. And landscaping and pruning, weeding, that's a fun one, and watering plants, you know, we've we got a routine down, so so he's learning a little domestication. But their move to the farm has also given Katie and Kim a chance to share their experiences through social media. Their Farm Wives blog is a way to reach out to other women in agriculture and those in urban areas who might want to know more about 21st century farming. So it was really just a, a way for me to keep my friends and family up to date on you know, what was going on out on the farm. It's my way of doing what I can to help, um, you know, share the story of agriculture, share the story of our operation, but also just become an advocate for agriculture because we need all the advocates we can get. And there's tons of misinformation out there, so I just do my part to try to set the record straight and just enlighten people on what really happens here. In addition to their farm wives blogging efforts, Katie and Kim also take part in a regular meeting of farm wives in their community. Basically, once a month, um, the farm wives, who are, you know, in their 20s and 30s, um, get together. Everybody can relate. You know, when your husband is out in the field at all hours of the night trying to get the corn planted, I know that there are at least, you know, so many other women in this county who are dealing with the same thing. What we really enjoyed the most is actually sitting around and just talking about our husbands and maybe complaining a bit about the lifestyle and, and maybe some of the the harder parts of living with a farmer. Derek and Adam may not always agree with what's said at the farm wives meetings, but they admit that very positive personal changes have come from working with their wives. Our time together isn't always plentiful sometimes, but uh, when she can come out and ride on the combine with us and, and be involved with harvest with the rest of the crew, that's uh, a lot of priceless time that, that uh, really has a lot of meaning when you look back on it. Their farm wives blog and their connection with others through social media has given both women a new appreciation of life on the land. We make sure you love this lifestyle. Um, it, it becomes your lifestyle. It's not just your husband's job. It is your, it's your job, it's your lifestyle. There's you know one and a half to two percent of the U.S. population are people involved in agriculture. So if I can somehow um, connect with people out there to show them kind of what we do and what our husbands do. I think that's a positive to what we're doing. The wide open plains of Kansas are famous for more than just wheat and corn. An important discovery near Dexter, Kansas in 1903 revealed large concentrations of helium beneath the soil. The extracted lighter than air gas was later used in balloons and airships during World War I. And while we're in the air, aviator Amelia Earhart hails from Atchison, Kansas. Technology can help us stay in touch, can help us access information to make our lives richer, or give us information to help us be better producers or consumers. But let's show you how technology is actually helping to save lives in some third world nations. Rob Stewart takes us to the University of Illinois where smartphone applications are being used to reach rural communities overseas.
Agriculture has long been an important academic offering at the University of Illinois. But today, some of the research here is focused on crop production far beyond the corn and soybean fields that surround the campus. So it's easy to go in and transfer these onto the phone. A team of researchers and graduate students is developing technology for saving lives in third world countries. The team is called Scientific Animations Without Borders, or SAWBO, a blend of academics, agriculture, and awareness. We're talking about a lot of the challenges that we face in getting information out to the approximately one billion low literate learners that, that live in the world. And these are people that have classically not had really good access to knowledge that can improve their lives. And there haven't been really good mechanisms to getting that information out to them. So as we started talking, the, this idea of animations that could be taken across cultures, across language groups, and could be deployed through the internet and through cell phones came up. Using cell phones to disseminate animated crop production videos allows the team here to tailor the instruction in different languages to specific needs of a country or region. Learning by example overcomes the limited literacy skills found in many third world areas. And the team has learned that the video outreach can often be the difference between life and death. So there's a lot of really great simple techniques out there that we can share with the world. Professor Barry Pittendry is one of the leaders in the agricultural project. He knows the need for these videos firsthand. The project takes him to Africa four times a year to work with farmers facing difficult food production problems. So there's a lot of great ideas out there that exist in local communities. And so with low literate learners, their ability to share with other parts of the planet it's really not, there's really no mechanisms to do that right now. But with, with this type of strategy, we can go in and work with these communities, animate those ideas, and share them with the rest of the world. This is a typical cell phone video. This one focuses on controlling or killing pests that can cripple the cowpeas crop, a staple in many parts of South America and Africa. Graduate student Tulupe Agabiade is from Nigeria and knows the struggles farmers face. Hers is the voice on the Calpies video. It was recorded on campus in her native language for use on cell phone videos in Nigeria. It actually means a lot for me to give back. I believe um, knowledge shared is very important in the world. It's always important when it's very good, it's rewarding when you have knowledge and you can share it with other people. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is really very rewarding. I believe that is the essence of um, having knowledge. You get the knowledge and then you can share it with other people. Many times, it's the women whose job it is to take the family's crops for sale at public markets, something that hits home for Tulupe. It makes me feel moved because I'm an African and yes, it does touch me because um, I know they will have information that can have positive impacts on their health, um, uh, their farming skills, and so many other areas of their lives. First, we need to move the whole thing. Francisco Sufferheld is the project manager responsible for editing all of the videos. He says the animation approach avoids cultural sensitivities. We started to talk about animations. They go very well across cultures and that's something that I was, uh, I work with different groups of people across borders and across different ethnicities. And I knew that by having animations, that will make easier for the material that we can create here to flow across ethnicities and borders. The project also touches other needs, producing videos that address public health issues. Right now, most of our work is focused on Africa, but uh, also in Latin America and, and all the parts where uh, they are facing uh, cholera outbreaks. And now uh, we are developing also health uh, related videos uh, that are a need, an urgent need. The Sawbo cell phone animated video project is currently underway around the world, encouraging change and impacting lives.
Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, it's um, I think one of the things I always enjoy about this, this type of program or this type of project is you get to meet people from highly divergent cultures and there's this type of mechanism where you do make a, some sort of connection with their community and you realize that hopefully you'll have some sort of lasting impact that will be positive for them, for them in the future. And that's going to do it for us this time. We thank you for traveling the country with us on this edition of America's Heartland. We are always so pleased that you can join us as we introduce you to interesting people and places. We've talked a lot about connectivity. If you haven't spent time at our America's Heartland website, well, you should. It's americasheartland.org. We have video from all of our programs and lots of other information. And if you'd like to spend time on social media, you'll find us there as well. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time on America's Heartland. You can purchase a DVD or Blu-ray copy of this program. Here's the cost. To order, just visit us online or call 888-814-3923. You can't see it in the eyes of every woman and man In America's heartland, living close to the land There's a love for the country and a pride in the brand In America's heartland, living close, close to the land America's Heartland is made possible by Farm Credit, financing agriculture and rural America since 1916. Farm Credit is cooperatively owned by America's farmers and ranchers. Learn more at farmcredit.com. Crop Life America, representing the companies whose modern farming innovations help America's farmers provide nutritious food for communities around the globe.